Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. And got a pretty nice pack one pick one here, Beast Whisper, one of the great reasons to move into a green deck. Chemisers, a great blue card. We've just drafted a bunch of blue decks, I wouldn't mind dipping our toes into green with the Beast Whisper here. Card's pretty powerful once it gets going and requires a pretty specific answer. Capture Sphere or Luminous Bonds don't do it. Let's take a Beast Whisper. Beast Whisper shines in Golgari a little bit more than Selesnya since making tokens with cards like Storm Companions doesn't give you extra cards, but I'll happily play it in either one. And after opening Conclave Cavalier, that's a pretty nice sign to move into Selesnya. Uh, I think this is the best card in the pack by far. Integrity Intervention is great too, but uh, not going to pass up on Cavalier. And then we can hope to wheel Skyline Scouts, maybe Sworn Companions. Not much else I'd want. Alright, Rosemane still keeps us on track. We're getting tempted by these nice uncommons, but the way our deck is set up, I'm happy to take a Rosemane Centaur. In Celestia, you really want to maximize the number of creatures in a sense which also maximizes our Beast Whisper, because the more creatures we have, the more uh, we are able to convoke out our expensive convoke creatures like Rosemane Centaur. So, perfect fit. And I'm not the biggest fan of Flight of Equinauts, but it might still be the pick here. Eight mana, even with convoke, is still a lot of mana, and it often leads you tapped out. And then if they kill the Flight of Equinauts, you're taking a million damage on the way back. There is also Golgari Fine Broker, which is a great green card that uh, we could take. Although, if we take Fine Broker, we probably can't play Fine Broker and Cavalier in the same deck. Centaur is potentially still splashable, especially if we pick up some Shield Mates at 2 mana that are white green hybrid cards that we can still use to tap for uh, white mana for Convoke, despite maybe mostly having a green black mana base. So that's an interaction to keep in mind. So Centaur is more splashable than it may appear. So I could see taking a Fine Broker, since I think it's enough better than Flight and Worm. And then if we do open some great black cards, we can maybe pivot into Golgari. If Celestia appears to be more open, we can stick to Celestia. Worm we can usually get pretty late, and it's pretty replaceable. In the Celestia deck, you would much rather have Convoke creatures at the top end instead of 6 mana Worms, so that you can also cheat on mana, maybe only play 16 lands instead of 17. Alright, what do we have here? A wood Shaper could be decent. Sever Strands can be okay with enough Gender Strays and Beetles to sacrifice. Plays well with Burglar Rats. There's a Burglar Rat right now. Do have a lot of 4 drops already, although if we end up Selesnya, of course, we probably don't play Fine Broker. So Wood Shaper still seems fine. Do want to keep an eye on our curve, of course, but taking a Disregard here seems pretty mediocre. So I'm fine with the Wood Shaper. It's potentially splashable in Golgari as well. Over Rat and Sever Strands. Alright, I'm pretty happy taking a Dissident, a great 2 drop. And it's important that we have enough cheap creatures to help us convoke. Cards like Centaur. Otherwise, Plaza would be okay fixing, can maybe help us splash black if that's something we want to do. Or splash uh, a red if we end up Celestia splashing Boros. Siege Worm would be okay too, but is pretty replaceable at the top end. So I'll take a nice 2 drop. Alright, Gender Strace, perfect. Plays well with Beast Whisper, helps us Convoke. And a good Curve Filler at 3 mana. Nothing else here. After taking a Wood Shaper, don't want another one. Unless we end up with a bunch of enchantments we need to fetch, like Luminous Bonds, then the Wood Shaper becomes better. And now I guess we'll take the District Guard. Could still take the Douser of Lights in case we end up Golgari. It's an okay 5 drop. Nothing special, but uh, if we don't end up with more 2-drops, then I will play the District Guard in Selesnya. So I think we'll take the white card here. Alright, what do we have here? Not the biggest fan of Peacemaker in Selesnya, since you're usually a beatdown deck. Making the opponent gain life is not exactly where we want to be. Could be an okay curve filler if we don't have any other 3s. Probably just want the other District Guard. And 
This is like the fifth uh, Undercity Uprising we've seen so far. Can be okay with enough like gender strays and beetles, but don't think we're splashing it. Ceratok and Okapi are both pretty mediocre. Which one's most likely to end up in our deck, given our curve currently? Probably the Okapi. It does have Vigilance, so it does play somewhat well with uh, Convoke still, so it's not the worst. I doubt we would want Utopia, although it is an enchantment that we can fetch with the Woodshaper, so it has a little bit of synergy going for it. Don't think we'll play Candlelight Vigil, but I also don't think we'll play Moodmark Painter. Not gonna splash Wave, so we'll take a Vigil just in case. And nothing here that we want. Alright, so first bank went pretty well. Picked up a nice Beast Whisperer into Conclave Cavalier. Rosemain Centaur strong. Uh, don't have any removal spells, but you don't often end up with a ton of removal in Selesnya. Gotta hope for Luminous Bonds and some uncommon removal. Sever Strands could be okay if we end up with a little bit of black. Alright, let's move into pack number two. Ooh. Thief of Sanity. Don't think we can uh, pivot into Demir at this point as much as I like Thief of Sanity. Got a Selesnya Guildgate, good mana fixing, shield made, decent 2 drop in the deck. Healer's Hawk, good 1 drop, especially if we can pick up some mentor creatures, but mostly just helping us convoke uh, Center on 3 if we go 1 drop, 2 drop. Probably taking the Hawk over the shield made since 1 drops are a bit more difficult to get than 2 drops. And the shield made somewhat likely to wheel. Alright, Luminous Bonds is great. Have to pretty much take all the removal spells we can get. Uh, World Soul Colossus is a fine top end card. Bust kind of is a nombo in our deck, it's more of a Boros card than a Celestia card. Would end up killing most of our creatures. So we'll take the Luminous Bonds and then hope that we maybe wheel a Prey Upon, take card, Colossus, we'll see. Well, <laughs> that's a pretty late Izoni. So is it too late to switch? Do we have a fine broker, some Sever Strands in the sideboard? Double black is not easy to splash, so we kind of have to commit to Golgari. Which means we would give up on Hawk, double guard, Luminous Bonds we can splash. Cavalier we can't play. Center we can potentially splash. What would we take if we don't take Izoni? Uh, patrol would be a decent pickup, can help us grow the Hawk and the Stray, any tokens we might find later. Um, Gender Stray would also be an okay addition, but we're not taking it over Patrol or Izoni. Mind of the Masses would be a nice trick. Izoni is such a good card, maybe we can contort our mana in some way to still include it. Or just uh, pivot back into Golgari. It's still pretty early in pack 2, so it's not impossible for us to make that change, and our best card, Beast Whisperer, is still just a, a fine card in Golgari. Yeah, if we take Izoni, Luminous Bonds we can splash, these cheap white cards we probably don't play, Cavalier we don't play, Woodshaper we could splash, depending, plays well with Sever Strands, I guess. Rosemain potentially splashable. Yeah, this is a tough decision. Like, if this were a, a real draft that's timed, and I didn't have time to make the decision, I would never take Izoni, since the risk of the, the draft train wrecking is just too high. But on Arena, where we, we can kind of take our time, and uh, maybe pivot a bit more easily, yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. We do have a double Sever Strand, so Jenner Stray plays pretty well with it. Just a nice creature for Izoni and Beast Whisperer. So I think that's a pick. We could also take Shieldmate, which would be a 2-drop we can play in Golgari. If we don't end up white, these cards we can play, whereas Shieldmate we can. And it would still help us convoke out the Centaur, as we mentioned earlier. So it is between Stray and Shieldmate. I think I'm leaning Stray. And then just hope we can pick up some 2-drops in time if we end up Golgari. Rhizome Lurcher would be excellent. Selesnya Guildgate for fixing would also be appreciated. Probably got to go with the Lurcher here, and we're pretty committed now. Alright, well, we're getting a lot of Golgari cards, so that's good. The only problem is that these uncommons are all pretty medium. Raiders is usually worse than Lurcher. Mulder Hulk is pretty clunky to get out, so I'm not too interested in either of these cards. Selesnya Guildgate, on the other hand, could help us splash the Luminous Bonds more easily. Would maybe still let us play the Rosemain Centaur more easily. So I think I'm more into the Guild Gate than the Mulder Hulk. Like, if we evaluate Mulder Hulk, let's say 
an ambitious estimate. It's turn five or six. Three of our creatures have died, which I think is already more than average. Then Mulder Hulk still costs us six mana for six six. That's not really a card we're excited to play. So yeah, let's take a Guild Gate. And Burgle Rat seems excellent. Nice two drop. Plays well with our double Savage Strands. And helps us fuel our undergrowth. So nice pick up here. And the late Necrotic Wounds is excellent. Uh, Gateway Plaza could be good mana fixing, but I don't think we're playing the Conclave Cavalier as much as that pains me. I think it's a little bit too ambitious to play a double white card. Uh, Centipede would be a decent three drop, although we already have double generous tray and three mana, so it's not like we're really lacking threes. And we could use more removal. Pilfering Imp isn't bad. It's an early creature that we can sacrifice, fuels undergrowth. And the fail case is a 1 1 flyer for one, which isn't great, but it can still trade off for some 1 toughness creatures. Alternative is Veil Shade, but uh, we've got a lot of expensive cards in our deck, so we don't have a ton of time to pump Veil Shades. And Prey Upon looks okay. Could also consider the Vapors. All the Vapor skills are on Burgle Rat. Uh, I guess that's about it. So Vapors could be decent still. Uh, Prey Upon is better in Selesnya, where you have more big creatures that you can get out early, like Rosemane Centaurs. It's kind of a close call. So let's get these white cards out of here. I think we're fully committed to Golgari now. So Cavalier's probably not happening. Woodshaper, maybe on the splash. Rosemane, maybe on the splash. I think we are fine splashing Luminous Bonds. And then uh, Okapi is kind of a mediocre card, otherwise the rest looks okay. So in this deck, would we rather have a Vapors on 3? Or a Prey Upon? The big creatures we have to fight with are Lurcher, if there's already a bunch of creatures in the graveyard. So it's a pretty slow removal spell at that. The Centaur, if we play it, can fight pretty well, but otherwise don't have any Death Touch creatures. Prey Upon looks pretty medium. Vapors could be a, a key card against uh, aggressive uh, Go White Boros decks. So I don't hate it. And now we can take a Bartism Bats. Not the best combo with the Vapors we just picked up. But a fine filler card. Already have an Okapi. Now we might take the Veiled Shade over the Bats. Since our 4 drops are pretty stacked already. So let's put these in a pile. Yeah, let's take a, let's take a Shade. And now Centipede is pretty good. Plays well with our double Saver Strands as well. I uh, don't think we're playing Trooper. Painter is more playable, I think, than Trooper. They're both pretty bad. We have a Trooper in the sideboard already. Let's take a Painter, I guess. Yeah. Trooper is one of the reasons why Golgari is kind of bad. If this card had a better ability, or started out as maybe a 3 3. Golgari would be a lot better. Alright, status statue seems like the pick here. Nice removal spell. Can hope to wheel Uprising. I mean, I think I prefer Savage Strands over Uprising for the most part, but if it wheels, we might play it. Alright, got some options here. Poisoner would be our first Death Touch creature. Child of Knights, kind of medium too. Or we could take another Rosemane and attempt to splash white. Our deck is a little bit light on beefy creatures. Wouldn't mind something like a, a Siege Worm to top off our curve. Although Poisoner is pretty tempting too. We did not end up taking that Prey Upon. Otherwise that would make Poisoner a little bit better. And dice our own Vapors. We might not play the Vapors, we'll see. I mean, I guess Poisoner is okay. It holds off early aggression, unless they have First Strike. And hopefully it ends up trading for a medium creature, fuels undergrowth. I wouldn't mind a Siege Worm though. Do have to take mana fixing pretty highly if we want to play cards like Golgari Finebroker and Izoni on curve. That being said, there's some other nice cards too here. Douster, Centipede, Pilfering Imp. But I think we want uh, the mana fixing. And it's actually interesting whether we want Plaza or, or Golgari Guildgate. Since we are planning on splashing white. Of course, if we take Golgari Guildgate, we can always add a Plains to our mana base. But every Plains we add makes it more difficult to cast Finebroker early. So... Plaza might be better for us than Guildgate. Of course, there are some downsides to Plaza. Usually I prefer Guildgate, but in this deck, 
Maybe Plaza's better. Eh, I'll just take a Plaza. Ooh, Eternal Troll. Could be good. It's a weird card. Sometimes it does nothing if you don't have enough food in the graveyard, but uh, we should be able to fuel it enough. Would also appreciate another 2-drop, so Distant would be good. Uh, but the Troll has probably more upside. Do need to work on our 2-drops. Only have... I guess we also have some 1s here at at 1 mana, Poisoner and Imp. So we have more early plays than it looks like. Right, let's take a Troll. Could take a Giant as another Curve Topper or Vigor Spur Worm. Not sure which one we prefer. Giant has potentially more upside. Although I guess Worm can also get in a nice chunk of damage with the ability. Can only be blocked by one creature, so can be double blocked. Let's take a, a Giant. And now we can take another Lurcher. There's also Whisper Agent, which we could cast for double black. Um, but our three drops are pretty stacked already. Don't need to play Okapi. Don't need to play Vapors. But uh, seems like a, a Lurcher here. Alright, I think I'm actually playing the Vine. Just an early blocker that we can sack to fuel Undergrowth. And this is kind of a close call. Lots of interesting cards. I wouldn't be opposed to a Locket in this deck. Centipede is another good creature. Necrolisk has a bit of synergy with the creatures we can sacrifice, like Rat and Generstray. Veil Shade I could potentially cut. Luminous Bonds we're probably not going to cast on Curve very often. So... Um... Let's say we don't play Centaur, and we don't play Woodshaper. Still have a Luminous Bonds, set a statue at 4. Like, some of these cards we're not going to play on curve, like Lurcher, Fine Broker. These are not cards we're often going to cast on turn 4. So I guess we'll make a, a pile with interaction and creatures, so we have a better idea how our actual curve looks like. Alright, so this is kind of a rough estimate. So yeah, we could use more 2s. Another 3 I wouldn't say no to. The Centipede could upgrade the Veiled Shade. At 4, if we don't play Lurchers and Fine Brokers on 4 very often, then we also have a little bit of a gap. So there's good arguments for all of these cards. I think Centipede and Necrolisk are the frontrunners over Locket, but not by much. We do have some expensive cards in Izoni and Giant, but those are the two only expensive cards. We have a Mana Sink and Dissident. But for the most part, our curve is, is relatively low. It's mostly just that our late game consists of playing some of these undergrowth creatures that you don't always play on curve as powerful late game cards. That makes a locket a little bit less desirable, despite helping us with the Zoni and Fine Broker. So I think I'm leaning towards one of the creatures. Now we have to decide between Necrolisk and Centipede. I think I'm leaning Centipede. When getting beat down by Boros, I would rather have a Centipede than a Necrolisk. It's kind of the tiebreaker. Pretty happy with the Dowser since we could use more top end cards. Uprising would also be decent, but we already have double Sever Strands that kind of fills the same role. Let's take a Dowser. Don't think we want a Saratok. Small chance we want a Child of Night. Ooh, well, it's a, an interesting 11th pick. Third Centipede or double or second Dowser. Might be second Dowser. So we can kind of build our entire deck already here. So these are two lands for mana fixing for Luminous Bonds. We could also give up on the Splash and just not play Luminous Bonds. In which case we would have preferred Golgari Guildgate over Gateway Plaza. But we can still play the Plaza just for the fixing it provides. Yeah, we could use more twos. So we might end up playing Child of Night. It's not the worst if we put a counter on it with Centipede. And it does tend to trade off pretty often just because the opponent doesn't want us to gain two life over and over again. Don't mind another Dowser. And I will take Uprising. Don't know if we'll play it. Alright, so we ended up with a, a decent Golgari deck. I'm very happy that we did make the switch, since Celesnia seemed pretty cut off in the, the last packs. Could even play a Painter if we wanted to, or it never happened. I already have a Painter in the sideboard. So what's our removal outside of Luminous Bonds? We have Necrotic Wound, Double Sever Strands, and Stata Statue. So could use a, another removal effect. I'm not sure if we're going to play the Uprising yet. 
If we play the Luminous Bonds, we need to play at least one Plains, I think. So we have three white sources total. The one Plains could mess up our Fine Broker, but otherwise... Guildgate and Plaza let us play the Luminous Bonds pretty pain-free. Uprising is one of our weaker cards, I think. So probably cutting that. And then Veiled Shade could be cut as well. Now that we picked up Double Douser, we've got some more beefy creatures. And the three E's look pretty good as is. So that one could go. Don't think we're main decking never happened. Could make for a good sideboard card though. Right, looks like the majority doesn't want the Luminous Bonds. So now we're regretting taking Plaza over Golgari Guildgate, so, but so be it. Do we still play the Gateway Plaza? Would help us out with Fine Broker and Izoni a little bit. We don't have money to drops, so we can get away with playing Plaza on turn 2 most of the time without having to skip a turn. Could cut the Lothless Giants, it's not the best card. And at 7 mana it's pretty pricey. I think we're playing 17 lands now that we picked up the Double Dowser at the top end. Otherwise we could have maybe played 16, since we also have Double Generous Tray to draw cards. And I think we're okay with an 8-8 split plus Plaza for fixing. Nice hand, we get to play Plaza on turn 2 and not get punished. Plaza is actually decent in a deck that has more 1-drops than 2-drops, which is the case here, since we have a decent amount of 1s but not a lot of 2s. Since we can't play Plaza on turn 1, but we can play it on turn 2. So it actually fits in our deck somewhat well. Next turn we can sack Vine if we don't draw land. Ooh. That's, uh, that's ugly. Are we ever gonna get to Izoni in time, considering we need to draw three more lands? And our opponent's probably gonna pick up their campaign a couple times. I don't think we're gonna get to Izoni, considering they're also playing counterspells. So I don't think we wanna get too greedy, just ditch the six drop that we're probably not gonna cast. And then hope that the... Uh, the bats and the lurcher get there. We also have a fine broker to get it back, so it's not lost entirely. Just play a bats for now. If they kill one of our creatures, then lurcher's a little bit bigger. All right, wish going crab. Are we killing the crab? I think we might. Could also sack Vine, attack with both, if they block Centipede we can wound to finish off Crab. Might be better, we could also kill the Disinformation campaign. Or attack and just give Death Touch, and then we can still sack Vine, I guess it's better. Although we miss out on a bit of damage. Killing campaign feels bad when you already have 6 cards in hand. Like I'm assuming I'm, I'm losing the card advantage battle anyway, we just have to steal a quick win here. So I don't think killing campaign is the way to go. So that leaves the option of using Statue or status as a pump spell, just casting it for 4 mana, um, or going for the wounds play. I think I'm just killing the crab here. I get in for 6, and then try and use Necrotic Wound as a trick la uh, next turn. If they play Deadly Visit, killing a creature, then Lurcher's bigger. Alright, Douser. Alright. Sever Strand's not bad. So we could sack Vine, killing Dowser, get in for another 6, put him down to 5, and hope to get there in time. Seems okay. Opponent is missing double black, so they could be holding a removal spell that they can't cast. Alright. Opponent says go, this looks like an artful takedown turn. Which does mean we get to play a 5-5 five, five Lurcher here. Alright, never mind. Whisper Agent maybe. I'm gonna go full control just in case so we can Necrolic Wound the Whisper Agent before it gets to block. Hmm, interesting. They probably timed that a little awkwardly there. Fair enough, so they're killing Centipedes real hard. And we get to hit for 4. And add another lethal threat to the board. Probably keeping land in hand in case of discard. 
Yeah, it was more like a, a stumbling takedown than an artful takedown. That waits. Uh oh. Are they gonna kill both creatures here? Darkblade agents. Alright. Let's find out if we got there. Attack for five. Alright. Well, we got some lucky draws for sure. Status statue, sever strands, but. Yeah. I'm glad we ended up discarding Izoni there, since we wouldn't have been able to really leverage it too much, I don't think. So Golgarbage got there. Pretty dirty win there, but I guess that's pretty fitting for Golgarbage. And yeah, this looks okay. Especially if we can pick up a second green source. And we picked up double green, so we're going to be casting some Beast Whispers this game, followed by some Dowser of Lights, hopefully. Up against the Boros, the bad guy. Alright, let's see if our big butts can get there. Troll's not bad. Pretty naked centipede here. I wonder if we should trade if they offer us. Because we don't get the counter from Centipede, but the scout is eventually going to grow wings. And we're pretty removal light and we don't have many flyers. I guess we've got the Pilfering Imp as a 1-1 flyer that can block scout. I think if they offer, I would trade here. Blade Instructor as well. Ooh, hello Izoni. Well, <laughs> we drew all the rares at once here. Hopefully we can pick up some lands in the meantime as well. Alright, play Beast Whisper. We are not going to put Beast Whisper in harm's way, but the Centipede is fine to die here. And even if we use Troll as a fog effect, that might be okay since we get to replace it with a draw from Beast Whisper. Don't have to be too greedy here when our hand is this stacked. And yeah, if the removal is a Luminous Bond, so it doesn't deal with Beast Whisper's ability. Justice Strike doesn't kill it. And Direct Current doesn't kill it. And yeah, there we see Luminous Bonds. Now we have to decide if we want to give up on our Beast Whisper dream in order to trade here, or if we hang on to it. We're taking 6, which is significant. We could reduce that down to 3. So next turn we're going to play the Troll, which at the very least, I mean, if we don't draw land at this, otherwise we're playing Dowser. I think I'm taking it, since we kind of need the extra draws from Beast Whisper just to help us draw lands for Izoni. It's close, though. Could be correct to trade. Alright, land is perfect. Now we get to play Dowser. And now that it, that we got a bit of value, who fine broker too. Well, now we're definitely fine trading if they offer. Since we can fine broker it back. Yeah, we've definitely got the late game covered. We just need to make sure that we don't die to a bunch of flying creatures. The extra draw from Beast Whisper can also help us draw into Sever Strands, which is a great combo with Luminous Bonds, since we can just sack the Centipede. That's enchanted by the Luminous Bonds, so we do have two Sever Strands to help there. Bounty Agent. Is that actually gonna be relevant this game? Legendary Permanent. That's an artifact creature enchantment, so it can kill Izoni, which is pretty funny. Alright, I think we'll just play another Dowser for now. Poisoner's not bad. Can we attack? I think it's a little risky to attack if they have another removal effect for the second Dowser. Then we're taking quite a beating on the way back, potentially. Yeah, let's uh, play it safe. Don't want to give them infinite time, since if they have something like a Cosmotronic Wave, they can finish us off. But I think we wait one more turn at least. Next turn we can Poisoner plus Centipede, which is pretty strong. Or Poisoner plus something else, we'll see. I think we lead with Poisoner, that way we could draw into a Sever Strands and cast it right away. Whereas if we play Centipede, we can't play the Plaza and Sever Strands right away. So let's lead with Poisoner. Bats could be good too. So that gives us a flying blocker for the Scout, so I'm less worried about the Scout now. And we can still play the Centipede. Alright, Child of Night gives us a bit of life gain as well. 
I think one Dowser can get in there now. Don't want to give them infinite time. And we have plenty of blockers now. And then we can play the plaza. Opponent is going for the blocks. That's good. Any trades we can make in this spot are great for us, since not only do we remove potential threats from their side, in case they had something like uh, Cosmotronic Wave, but we also fuel Undergrowth. And with all the card advantage we have, we are definitely not worried about trading resources, opponent decides against it. But they considered it for a brief second, which makes me hopeful that uh, their hand's not very good. So next turn, we can go Bats plus Child, send in maybe two Dowsers even. Try and get the game over with. Hammer Dropper is good. That trades for a Dowser by itself. Ooh, a Necrotic Wound could be good too. We could play some creatures main phase one in case we draw into a removal spell. If we play the bats and they Cosmotronic Wave us, they get to kill Poisoner and bats, which is pretty bad for us. We could also trade Dowser for Hammer Dropper if they want to, and then just find Broker it back. Although we kind of want some creatures in the graveyard. I guess we will play the Child of Night first here. See what we draw. Land. Alright. I think I'm sending both Dowsers. And hoping for some trades. Alright, that happens. That's fine. So we have two options. We can play the bats, which gives us a nice evasive wing condition, although that's poor in the face of potential Cosmotronic Wave. Our opponent briefly considered double blocking Dowser earlier, which makes it less likely that they have a Cosmotronic Wave, otherwise they would never consider blocking. Or we can play Fine Broker returning Dowser, which is a nice value play, but then we don't have any food for undergrowth. So I think I'm um, leaning towards playing the bats. And pass a turn. We can always Necrotic Wound the Blade Instructor if uh, they try and do something here. So definitely seeing the power of Beast Whisper. Dark Current is fine. So they're playing right into our Undergrowth game plan now. We can Necrotic Wound the Scout if they give it flying. Otherwise we can probably afford to keep it in hand since it's just one mana. Pretty cheap to play. So yeah, had we traded Beast Whisper this game would have been completely different. Could have still been correct under the circumstances. Opponents missed a few land drops. We were lucky to hit our land drops right away. But uh, yeah, it's interesting to think about. Opponent does nothing. Yeah, let's just untap. Again, we're fine making any and all trades. So Child and Dowser can get in there. And then we can decide whether or not it's time for Izoni. Izoni plus the Centipede with Luminous Bonds is also an interesting combo. Could give a counter to a creature at instant speed as well. But again, we're happy just getting rid of their creatures. So we don't have to fear something like a wave as much. Which is probably the only way we lose this game. Now that Bounty Ancient is gone, they can't kill Izoni anymore. So they probably have a trick for this Blade Instructor, Sure Strike. No, never mind. It's an aggressive block then. Do they have a, an effect? I guess they could have a Justice Strike to finish off the Dowser. Would make some amount of sense. Alright, I think it's probably Izoni time now. And then we can always find Broker it back if it dies. And yeah, Izoni's gonna prompt a concession, so... We kind of beat our opponent into submission thanks to our powerful rares, Beast Whisper and Izoni. Alright, 2-0 so far. And that's why we first picked Beast Whisper. Yeah, this looks okay. Severed Strand's great combo with Rat and Generous Tray. Hopefully we'll draw into some of our bombs. But this is a good early start. Probably should not have played my Swamp since now it might hold priority with Wound, giving away a bit of info. I think I'll play the Child before the Rat just to make that trade if they want to. Alright, Gorgon. So, probably just playing the Stray here. We're also a bit constrained on green mana, so playing our green spells 
while we're on single green source makes sense and next turn we can maybe centipede plus wound or rat plus trans dissidents all right could uh, poisoner plus centipede here seems fine no real reason to sever strands yet uh, and burgle rat is pretty man inefficient Opponents unsure if they're Golgari or Selesnya or both. Not sure what their primary color is. Alright, Gorgon attacks. With the fact that we have a Sever Strands in hand, I'm not too upset with trading our Death Touch creature. Uh, they can't pump the Dissident yet, that's 5 mana. So they either have a trick or they just want to make some trades to set up their own undergrowth synergies. I think I'm fine trading Centipede for Dissident and then Poisoner for Gorgon. We get a 2-3 Jenner straight out of the deal. The rat is still good fodder for Saver Strands. Alright, they had nothing, so no Rhizome Lurchers on their side. Golgari Finebroker can return one of our creatures. Let's start by attacking. So, it's unclear whether we actually want to find Broker anything here, since these aren't the most powerful cards we have in our deck. So it's between Rat or Fine Broker. I think I'm leaning Rat, take it slow. This card's Crashing Canopy, does have a few targets in our deck. So it wasn't a complete blank. Could keep Forest in hand in case they play their own Rat. But I think we're gonna want double green at some point. Although it would still be reasonable to keep land in hand and discard forest if they play rats in the hopes of drawing another forest soon. Not sure what I would discard if they played a rat here. Alright, pulfering him could could be decent here. Not sure what they're holding. Maybe they're holding like Swamp Ritual of Soot, which would not kill the Fine Broker. Just a bunch of expensive cards, including Find Finality, in which case playing Find Broker is also not great. If they don't do anything, then of course having a 3-4 in play would be nice. Getting a Centipede back isn't the worst. Alright, I think I'll commit. Just in case they are maybe holding a bunch of double wide cards, or who knows what else. I want to keep out the pressure so we don't give them infinite time. Looks like a prey upon. Fair enough, just a one for one at the end of the day. And now we could necrotic wound, attack for five, six, and a centipede to the board. Seems okay, still have a sever strands back. And we are threatening lethal, so if they just play a creature, they're dead. And they don't have 6 land yet for fine finality. Alright, that does it. Sweet. Alright, diamond 1. We made some progress today. Alright, this hand punishes us for the plaza over guild gate, since we can't play red on two. But on the draw I think we keep. We've got rat plus strands as a nice early interactive set of cards, as well as stray, which we can cast once we get the plaza down. So totally reasonable hands. The plaza could punish us if we're up against a very aggressive deck. But so be it. Alright, so we did draw two untapped lands in the meantime, which was lucky. So I'm kind of liking the rat here. The earlier the better, because they have less information to work with. Discards a land. So they don't seem to be lacking mana. And a blade instructor. Alright, the rat lines up pretty well there. I'll just play a generous straight for now. Don't think it's worth it to attack with a rat in case uh, they do remove our creature somehow. They want to take three. 
And yeah, he's only a good draw, so our late game's looking good. Got some nice removal, so I'm liking our chances. Again, I'm, I'm fine playing it more passively here. We'll just play Vine, play Plaza. Keep up Necrotic Wound, just in case. Opponent could have a more mid-range Eboros deck with a strong late game. But uh, our late game's pretty good too, so I'm not too worried. So Instructor does threaten to mentor onto the recruit next turn. So 5 mana gives us access to Fine Broker with nothing to find. Could sack the Vine, and then we can Necrotic Wound the Instructor before it attacks. And then we could double block Recruit with Stray and Rat, and we would still kill the Recruit despite first strike. Could do that all at instant speed. So don't have to commit to it now. If they have a pump spell for the Instructor, then we get punished because then um, they get to keep the Instructor while the effect from the pump spell applies. But Vine could also throw in like a... a chum block and sacrifice type scenario. So I think I'm gonna wait. Could get punished here by not doing it in our turn. But uh, opponent's been playing in a pretty suspicious way. So who knows what they have. Maybe a Cosmotronic Wave kills Child and Rat here. If we get to trade a rat for an instructor, I think I'm pretty happy. Demotion or burglar rat? Deal. Like, what does a, a rat have to do wrong to be demoted? How does a rat get in the Boros Legion in the first place? Can sack Vine, Necrotic Wound Instructor. I think I'm happy just trading Child of Night for Instructor if they attack here. I could also respond to the Mentor trigger by sacking Vine, but might as well just block with it. Not really in a hurry. So, block, trade, and then we'll sack Vine. Opponent has a response, maybe a trick, and we get to get them. Right, Righteous Blow. So we can sack Vine. And then we can decide whether or not we want a Necrotic Wound Blade Instructor, or let this happen and a Necrotic Wound the Recruit. I mean, this seems fine. Could also wait until end of turn, since uh, the recruit's already blocked and they might play another creature we want to kill instead. Opponent does nothing. Alright, let's wound uh, the recruit here, I think. All the pump spells they could play would pump at least two toughness here. So, might as well uh, kill the recruit since Stray blocks the instructor. Probably a little bit too early to play Zoni, we can take our time. We're probably going to want to sack the Imp and then sack Burgle Rat with Sever Strands before playing Zoni. And then we can find Broker it back. So our late game is looking pretty nice. Oh, I guess a Rat should have attacked here since it can block, oh well. Opponent can stay at 20. Just a strike or Pilfering Imp, that's fine. Opponents definitely not lacking removal spells. Maniacal Rage, the Blade Instructor, deal. So we could take 5 or we could chomp. Taking 5 is probably fine here still. Keep the Generous Ray around. One attack first. Stray is probably fine to attack. Any haste creature they would play. We don't have any good blocks on. And then we would have liked to draw a few more swamps here, but I'm not gonna complain. Alright, so he's only 4 4, is looking pretty good. And then if they have an answer, we always have the Fine Broker. And we even have the mana to sack one of our creatures right away here, in case they have a sweeper effect like Cosmotronic Wave or something else. All right, he's only carrying us once again. But yeah, he's only powerful. That's why we switched. Skyline Scout. That's fine. 
think we're fine just attacking into the scout with everyone. Oh man, this is gonna be beautiful. Opponent is gonna try and take out Izoni and we get two Golgari fine broker it back. That's probably gonna prompt a concession, is my guess. Yep. Do maybe... Maybe we want to keep Izoni in hand on the off chance that they do have Cosmotronic Wave. So, we'll see here how much we want to commit to the board. Yeah, that's about right. Alright, for a no. Hand looks fine. Alright, let's uh, play at our swamp. Alright, that's a scary start. But we've got some good blockers coming up. Let's see if they have another creature to grow the Pelt Collector. Hopefully they don't. And we get to trade. Otherwise they're Centipede. Healer's Hawk. Looks like uh, Convoke's happening here. Centaur on three. Well, that was uh, quite a curve. Pelt Collector into Recruit into Hawk plus Centaur. We are pretty far behind. Don't have our Death Touch creature or Sever Strands to use as removal. All right, hopefully we can make some trades happen. So I'm thinking we just want to block with a centipede. So we get the the counter value on dissidents. So it can block the recruit next turn. We're taking seven. Forest isn't bad. Alright, so we've got a few options. We can play a generous stray. A little bit too early for Rhizome Lurcher. So it's between the stray and the centipede here, I think. I think I'll play the stray. Draw a card. Punished for the Gateway Plaza once again. Could have been a Guild Gate, so well. More Convoke happening. Nope, just a centaur. Well, we have a pretty good double block on the Centaur, and if they do have a, a combo trick, then the Lurcher just gets bigger, so that's fine by me. And our late game is not lacking here with Fine Broker, Lurcher. Ooh, second Centaur. Second Centaur might be tough to beat. Do have a 5-5 five, five Lurcher, but... Uh, if they attack with everyone, we're taking seven. It's getting pretty sketchy. Of course, if they have a Luminous Bonds, we're dead. Can't sever strands here. Man, this Gateway Plaza. Alright, please don't kill us. Just a Hawk attacking. There we go. No, don't do it. They're thinking about it. Well, they definitely don't have a trick, otherwise they would s smash here. Ooh, wow. Our opponent had it all. Yeah, I mean, if uh, this plaza was a guild gate, we could have gone centipede plus sever strands, perhaps. We could play fine broker, get back a random creature. How's our next turn gonna look like? Block, block, take six, seven. I think we need to lurcher back on defense. Of course, Sever Strands does gain us a bunch of life, which is nice, but I think we need a good blocker for these centaurs. So I guess we'll play the centipede. Although Fine Broker blocks recruit better. I think I think we play Fine Broker. Fine Broker also lets us return Dissident, so we can go Dissident plus Sever Strands for four mana. In case we don't draw land. But uh, yeah, it's not looking great here. Just the flyers attacking. 
That's fine, that buys us more time. Alright, no lands, so... I think we have to go Dissident Sever Strands here. Can't afford to... play this tray in the hopes of drawing a land, that's just too risky. Yeah, this plaza definitely punished us pretty bad. Just a hawk getting in there. Ooh, that's bad. So we can play the bats to block the patrol. What if they smash with everyone? They get a 2-2 hawk, so we're taking at least 2 down to 3. And then... We have to chum block the centaur. And they get another two in with the recruits. I mean, it's ugly, but it might be the only way here. We're down to one life if they send everyone. We're dead to any removal spell. And we don't have an answer for the 2-2 two -two Hawk if they send patrol. So, gotta hope to top deck something. Not sure what. That's a big lurcher, it's not gonna save us here though. Can play Jenner Stray, I guess we can draw Necrotic Wound still and be alive. Gotta keep up black mana. Alright, that's not gonna do it. If we play Child of Night, they just attack us with a Hawk, so they're not gonna play into the life gain. So, we're dead on board if we play the Child of Night. So, I guess we'll pass a turn. Oh well, this game felt winnable. If the plaza was a Golgari Guildgate, I think we would have been okay. Since then, we would have been able to deploy our hand faster. We still would have needed to draw an answer to the flyer at some point, but we would have had more life to work with. Although, to be honest, our opponent had an, an incredible start with turn 1 Pelt Collector into turn 3 uh, Centaur, backed it up with another Centaur, and then had another Flying Convo creature, so they definitely had a great draw. But yeah, the, the Plaza didn't look great. I think we still want the Plaza in our deck, just for the mana fixing it provides, since we have a lot of double black, double green cards. Alright, the sand looks great. Imp into rats, sack imp on three, have a nice wound for at least two. Yes indeed, next week is the early access event for War of the Spark and I will be participating as well. So we'll play lots of... Uh, lots of standard decks, brews, and then uh, some sealed in between, so make sure to tune in. Could keep the pilfering him back to play around Righteous Blow. I'm fine if they have one here. Uh, I think the event starts on the 23rd and goes for 24 hours, but I might be a day off. What deck am I looking forward to making the most? I haven't really taken... Too much time to uh, look at uh, the spoiler yet, but uh, a lot of interesting cards to build around for sure. So we'll have our hands full. So we could play a stray, they get to mentor onto the token, have a 2-2, that's fine. They want to sack the imp at some point, so we could sack imp now, necrotic wound, the blade instructor. Although the stray blocks instructor so well that it feels like a waste. Probably want to keep it for a flying creature. So I think the play is just attack for one. And then play Jenner's Tray. Not our Jenner's Tray, so next turn we could go Stray plus Wound. And if they spend resources killing the Stray, that's fine by me. If they put a Maniacal Rage on Instructor, then what? Would have three toughness, so we can't quite Necrotic Wound it yet. I guess we could chomp and then sack the Imp and Necrotic Wound. Right, Cosmotronic Wave, just to get a mentor in, kill our imp. So we got punished a little bit for waiting on sacking the imp there, but it's not too bad. 
probably going to play the stray, and then do we let them attack once again? It's probably fine. Since we could trade off stray for instructor and then shrink the token with wound and keep our gender stray, or we could let damage happen to play around a pump spell. Could also status for one mana. Got some options. And having options is always a good thing. So now we're kind of incentivized to preserve one creature for Sever Strands. If we wound Instructor right now, we have a, a good double block on the Soldier token, so if they attack, we know they have a trick. Or we could just Necrotic wound the token, and then Instructor isn't mentoring on anything. It's close. I think I'm gonna wait, see what they do. Opponent moves to combat. Thanks with both. So we could respond to the trigger with Necrotic Wound on the Soldier token. Let's say they play a Pump Spell on the Soldier token, that's not too bad. Yeah, I think, I think I'm think i down. Could also block the Blade Instructor, maybe they use a Sure Strike on the Blade Instructor and then we get to kill the Instructor in response. And take 3 lifelink. It's kind of close here. I think I'll Necrotic Wound uh, the token. And see what they do. At the very least, we shrink it down, so if they use a pump spell, we're not taking all the damage. So they do have something. That's pretty clear. Take heart. Fair enough. I guess we'll just uh, single block Instructor. Could double block to play around like a Righteous Blow on Jenner Stray, but I think we're fine. Recruits. Child of Knights. Alright, so we can attack. Sever strands the 3 3 and then play Child of Knights. That seems fine. And if they trade, then that's fine too. I doubt they will. And in the meantime, Orizoni is just getting bigger and bigger. So once we do get to 6 mana. We'll be in great shape. Recruit attacks. Lands. Alright, so can play Douster, stay back. Opponent already cast one Cosmotronic Wave, hopefully they don't have a second one. The plan here is to just put the child in front of the hammer dropper. And then Douster could block recruit. Just to strike the child of night, fair enough. Attacks with both. So we could eat a recruit and then kill the hammer dropper. Seems okay. And uh, we're probably going to end up killing the hammer dropper, no indestructible tricks. I guess there's a double white rare that can give indestructible. So could also just play dissident to block the hammer dropper here. Don't have to status statue. So I think we can chill for now. Not in a hurry, don't need to attack since we've got Izoni incoming. Izoni can gain us life as well. Another hammer dropper, alright. Guess we'll play another Douster. We would be dead to another Cosmotronic Wave if we tap out. Is that worth it? But usually Boris only plays a one Cosmotronic Wave. They can definitely play more, but don't necessarily expect another one. Alright, let's play a Dowser. And hope we don't regret it. The way they've been playing didn't make it seem like they had a wave, considering they threw away the Recruit instead of waiting. Alright, so we could cast an Izoni here. Uh, doesn't really help us if they have the wave. So how about we attack with the Douster of Lights, if they take it, fine, we play Zoni. Maybe we should just kill the, the Hammer Dropper, but I kind of want to keep this for a flying creature. So I will offer the trade. Opponent takes it. Alright. No waves, please. Just mount and go. Alright, now we're in good shape. Want to keep up status statue so we don't die to wave, but we can be pretty aggressive here. I think I'm okay offering up his Oni, considering we picked up Fine Broker. 
Don't think it's quite worth it to send the tokens. But maybe next turn. Alright, trades happen. Once the trades happen, then we should be golden. Alright, we're gonna keep one hammer dropper, maybe to keep back the tokens. Not gonna pump the dissident, just hit them for 10. Pass a turn. And we can kill the hammer dropper end of turn if they don't play anything and they're dead on the way back. They're pretty dead regardless if they don't have anything, but... Might as well show dominance. Sweet. So he's only claims another victim. Alright, 5 and 1, not bad. Hand looks fine. Yeah, it seems fine to attack here. And then we could drop a centipede. Opponent trades. Works for me. Hunted witness we can attack into. Does block our Child of Night pretty well. So we'll probably play Gender Stray first. Try and hit our land drops for Dowser. Holy moly, Sapperwing, once again. With a $10 donation, thank you so much. I'm very grateful for uh, all the support. Alright, well, Beast Whisper is an excellent pickup. And at some point we'll sever strands away the centipede, so the Luminous Bonds is not too bad. Yeah, well, let's let's play the Beast Whisper. Opponent is splashing green, so they might have some... Uh, I guess it could be Selesnya splashing red as well, for all we know. So not sure what to expect. I guess we'll trade one damage for one damage with the Stray here. In case they do answer the Beast Whisper. Alright, Tribunal, the Beast Whisper, it's too bad. We do have status statue that could destroy the Conclave Tribunal, but uh Don't expect Beast Whisper to be back anytime soon. Let's drop the Dowser. So their opponents had two nice removal spells, hopefully they don't have any more. And we would love to draw some Sever Strands. Status Statue would be great. Ease only at some point. Alright, we might see them chum block Dowser with the Hunted Witness. If we trade Stray for a token, it might be easier for Centipede to attack. But I think I'll leave the Stray back for now. So many cards we could have drawn with uh, Beast Whisper here. Feels bad. Alright. Our hands in play. Fair enough. Kills Child of Night and uh, Hard Poisoner. But it does feed our graveyard for undergrowth. And they don't have it for an Izoni. If they want to use removal spell on the stray to get in, that's fine by me. Alright, Sky Knight. So, opponent appears to be Boros, splashing green, presumably for Trostani, that's always the go to. Trade for a trick.
Necrotic Wound's pretty good. So Centipede probably gonna play defense now. We can kill the Legionnaire, no need to do it now. Since minus four, minus four kills the Legionnaire through any combo trick, they might play something better. All right, we need to draw something relevant here since opponent still has a lot of spells in hand. They've been stuck on four lands the entire time. So they've got some heavy hitters left, presumably. Yep, there's Trostani. Well, probably gotta kill Trostani here. We'll let them attack first so we can ambush a token. Alright, so... Need to find an answer for this kind of Legionnaire. And there we go, he's Zoni. Alright, now that we drew Izoni, we can be a little bit more aggressive. I don't mind trading Centipede for two tokens here. Also feeds Izoni a little bit more. Can sack the Centipedes. Gain a bit of life back. <laughs> Opponents like, yep, that's good enough for me. All right, well. Six and one, let's see if we can go the distance here. All right, what about our hands? A little punished for the Gateway Plaza. More than a little bit, actually, since we can't play Dissident on two, and we also can't play Poisoner. But I'm still gonna keep. Got lands and spells, hopefully we draw Swamp. Not sure yet if we're gonna play Dissident on two or Gateway Plaza on two. So yeah, I think our biggest mistake in the draft was probably taking Plaza over Golgari Guildgate, since we ended up cutting the Luminous Bonds. Alright, given how our hand developed, I think I'm fine playing Dissident on 2, and then since we don't have a 3-drop anyway, we get to play Plaza next turn. We're happy trading off resources. Burglar Rat doesn't bother me too much. Poisoner's probably not great in the face of Burglar Rat. Fuels Undergrowth. We'll trade two damage for one damage. Play our Plaza. Alright, so our mana is online. Now we just want to get creatures in the graveyard. Blood Operative. That's annoying. Exiles our creature, shrinks down our Undergrowth. So that was effective, although that's a pretty good draw as well. Hopefully no Artful Takedowns in our future. And we'll keep Dissident back since we don't want to raise a lifelinker. Do we get to untap with Beast Whisper? One time. If we trade, we could get punished by a Playcrafter, which opponent could have. But we do want to actively block to grow our Lurchers, so I think we do block. Alright, nothing. I guess we'll lead with Vine. Might want to sack it before playing the Lurcher here. Pilfering him, perfect. All the cheap uh, sacrifice creatures. Definitely don't want to attack with Beast Whisper into a potential Whisper Agent here. So we're definitely going off. I'm probably fine playing out a land. We could keep it in hand for discard purposes, but we've got a Beast Whisper in play. If they make us discard, we'll just draw more cards. So I'm liking our chances. Dowser is a good one. Alright, so we could sack both creatures or we could play our own Dowser. Probably playing our own Dowser here. And now we can keep land in hand since the difference between 5 and 6 isn't actually all that huge. Since next turn we can just sack one of these two for 2 mana and play a Lurcher for 4. And we played most of our 1 drops in the deck. So let's play Dowser. Sever Strands is good too. Alright, let's pass a turn. I guess we can attack for one. Capture Sphere Dowser. Alright, now we've got a nice Sever Strands target. So everything is lining up perfectly here. Doesn't get countered by Disdainful Stroke, which is the only counterspell they can have here. 
they could bounce their own Dowser in response, that's fine. What's our play this turn? We can probably just sever strands, Dowser on Dowser, and then sag both creatures, and then next turn go off with Lurchers. So I guess we want to sag the Imp first to see what's up. Could also sag the Vine in case we draw into another creature we want to play this turn. Could also be reasonable, I guess. I guess we'll start there. Uh, swamp. Let's sack Imp. Ooh, Vraska on the splash. This Bartons and Bats could definitely be an issue. Vraska they can cast at the moment and also doesn't do much since all our creatures are 4 mana. So I think we actually take the Bartons and Bats. And then we'll sever strands the Dowser. Alright, and next turn we get a pretty nice turn. Do we trade 2 damage for 1 damage? Yeah, probably. So we've got some 6-6 six, six Lurchers incoming. Wall of Mists. Doesn't line up all that well here. Did get a little bit punished for not playing the land earlier since now we can double 4-drop, so there was definitely a downside to keeping land in hand. There almost always is, especially when you have a card draw engine in play. But yeah, that'll do it. Sweet, so... Got a lot of wins off of our rares. Beast Whisper we first picked. Izoni we picked uh, pretty late into pack 2, so we got rewarded for switching. And there we go, gold garbage, 7 wins a diamond. Pretty nice. And we're a few games away from Mythic. Let's crack some packs. Got some gems, pack one, pick one, probably campaign over visit, although it's close. <laughs> Is this real life? Penas with the, the giant raid. I was about to call it a night after we just got a giant host from Ali earlier and already prolonged our stream by a draft. <laughs> and now we got the giant host from Ben, welcome. Hope you had a fun, uh, fun stream, Ben, and thank you so much for the host. Well then, hmm, I guess I'm not gonna sleep today. All right, let's get to Mythic, why not? Let's uh, jump into another draft. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.